Okay, we're back and we're going to continue talking a little bit about organization. I sort of left off the top of the middle of the concept. I'm going to kind of wrap that up today with this video. So, if you recall, we were talking about SP3 hybridization. Um, we said when um, an S orbital blends with three P orbitals, we end up with a teardrop shape of orbital. And, and for my models, it, we're going to use that balloon shaped orbital there. So this represents an electron and an sp hybrid orbital. This little knob here at the end and at the other end are just for me being able to create models with it. So you'll have to ignore those. It has this type of shape for an sp hybrid. Now, when four of those hybrids are placed around, let's say, a nitrogen atom here, they are going to be as far away from each other as possible. These hybrid orbitals repel and they'll have, let's see, uh, three of the orbitals will have one electron in them, and this orbital up here will say has a pair. So that one can't bond, but these other three can. So we end up with this trigonal pyramidal shape. And I could construct the ammonia molecule for you using this model. So if we could have a pair here, we could share a pair in that orbital, and we can share a pair in these other two orbitals, and we end up with the shape that we all know and love, for the ammonia molecule, which is a trigonal pyramid. Now, if I drew the Lewis structure, you would see that the nitrogen atom has four pairs around it. One, two, three, four. And whenever we see four pairs around an atom, we will know that that's an sp3 hybrid. Um, uh, or sp3 hybridization is occurring um, in those four orbitals. Now, the same thing is true with water. Uh, water is an sp3 hybrid, at least the oxygen atom in the center uh, shows sp3 hybridization. But with water, we have two of the orbitals that have pairs in them already, so they can't bond anymore. So we'll say these two already have pairs. But these two only have one electron each. So these two can bond, and that's where my hydrogen atoms are going to go. So if I draw the Lewis structure for water, we would see this. And once again, we see four pairs around the oxygen atom, which tells us that it shows sp3 hybridization. So whenever there are four pairs around an atom, we are going to call that sp3 hybridization. It's the result of an s blending with three p orbitals. And we end up with four hybrid orbitals, one, two, three, four, being as far away from each other as possible, which is that tetrahedral shape. Now, there are other hybridizations other than sp3. For instance, let's take a look at BF3. That's a classic example for sp2 hybridization. So if you take a look at the electron configuration for, for boron, it is 1s2, 2s2, uh, 2p1. And the orbital diagram for the valence electrons would look like this, 2s2. 2p1. And it would look like boron can only make one bond, but we know it's making three. So how do we account for that? Well, this s electron is promoted to a p orbital. So now we have it one in the s and two in the p, and then these three blend together to form an s with two p's as my hybrid. So we call this sp2 hybridization. Now, what shape will those take on? Well, if we have three pairs as far away from each other, of course, we end up with our trigonal planar um, arrangement. And each of those orbitals can make one bond. So we'll put a bond there. And taking these other models apart, put a bond here and a bond here. And we end up with a nice, pretty trigonal planar molecule. If I drew the Lewis structure for BF3, it would look like this. And if we took a look at the central atom, boron, we would see that that has three pairs around it. And when you have three pairs, we call that sp2 hybridization. So three pairs around an atom is sp2. So we need an s and two p's to get us our three orbitals. Now there's also sp2 hybridization, and we're going to look at BEH2. So if we look at BEH2, we're actually... Here I'm going to do BEF2. Hope that's okay if I'm changing that for you really quickly. Uh, the electron configuration for ber beryllium is 1s2, 2s2. If I just look at the valence orbital, or the valence energy level, 
um, it ends with 2s2. That means it has two electrons in the s orbital. It can't make any bonds with that orbital. So what we believe happens is one of these s's are promoted to a p. So now we have one in the s and one in the p, and then these two blend together to form two sp hybrid orbitals. So if I have an sp hybrid, uh, what those orbitals are going to do once again is go as far away from each other as they can, and we end up with this linear type of arrangement. There's one electron here, one electron here, so each of those can bond with a fluorine or a hydrogen atom, and we end up with a nice linear molecule with a bond angle of 180. So we end up with BE, we'll go with F2 since that's what I have in my illustration here. Looks like that. And you'll see there are two pairs around this atom here. And so whenever that happens, we call that SP. So two pairs would be SP hybridization. So let's just recap quickly. If I had four pairs around an atom, we call that SP3 hybridization. If there are three pairs, we call that sp2. Two pairs, the one we just did, is sp. Okay, now I'm going to add a note here. Multiple bonds. To determine this, we'll count as only one pair. So if we have multiple bonds, we're only going to count that as one pair. We're going to show you why here in just a second, but that's a little side note there. So four pairs would be an S, one S with three P's for a total of four, right? One, two, three, four hybrids. Three pairs would be an S with two P's, one, two, three hybrid orbitals, and two pairs would be an S with a P, one, two hybrid orbitals. And once again, multiple bonds will count as only one pair. Let me draw the Lewis structure for C2H4 for you quickly, and you're going to see that there is a multiple bond there. So that is C2H4. Now, if I asked you what the hybridization on these carbon atoms were, you would count pairs of electrons around them, wouldn't you? You'd say one, two, and there's a multiple bond. We're only going to count that as one pair, three. And this carbon atom is one, two, three. So we'd say that that would be S. P2 hybridization. Well, I thought I just told you a few minutes ago that carbon showed sp3 hybridization. And that's true when it's making single bonds. But when it's making multiple bonds, it can have hybridization other than sp3. So if that carbon atom is making an sp2 hybrid, let's see, it would look like this. I'm going to try to draw that for you. One, two, Three, and each of these would have one electron in it. Okay, and then I have the other carbon doing the same thing. One, two, three. All right, so we're saying sp2. Now remember, carbon has four valence electrons. So if it's sp2, we have one, two, three. And what about that fourth valence electron? Well, it's in a p orbital all by itself, and we say it's non-hybridized. So that p orbital is not hybridized. So what happens is we end up forming this figure eight shape around each carbon atom, which is a non-hybridized p. So that's one p orbital, and that's my non-hybridized p. Now think about what would happen if these carbon atoms came close enough to each other wouldn't these two orbitals overlap? And they would share a pair. When they do, if these guys come close enough to each other, we call that a sigma bond. And then these p orbitals, each with one electron in them, remember they each have only one electron in them, if they come close enough to each other, they can sideways or parallel overlap. And when that happens, we call that a pi bond. So the double bond you see here is really the result of a direct head-to-head -head overlap of hybrid orbitals, which we call a sigma bond, and a parallel or sideways overlap of p orbitals, which we call a pi bond. Let me try to dr build the models to show you this. It's a little bit complicated, but I think I can do it for you. Let's see. 
So let me get rid of these white balls here. Okay, so I'm saying that that's one carbon atom showing sp2 hybridization in these purple, uh, this purple lobe above and below represents my non-hybridized p. Let's build another one for you because there are two carbon atoms, right? C2. So what I'm trying to say is when these carbon atoms that are showing sp2 hybridization come close enough together, those sp hybrids overlap and they form a bond right there. That bond, due to that overlap, is called a sigma bond. Then if they continue to get close enough together, we can have a parallel overlap between these two p orbitals that they've not hybridized, and we call that a pi bond. So a double bond is the result of a sigma bond and a pi bond. Sigma bond is that direct head-to-head -head overlap, and the pi bond is this parallel overlap. Now there's a nice illustration in your book, and the one here on the bottom of the page that tries to show you what I just tried to talk about. We have this direct head-to-head -head overlap, call that a sigma bond, and then when these non-hybridized P's overlap with each other, we call that a pi bond. Okay, Let's do the same thing then with C2H2. So if I draw the Lewis structure for C2H2, we end up with this. And we see a triple bond between the carbon atoms. Now how the heck does that form? Well let's see, the hybridization on, the, on these two carbon atoms would be, let's see, there's one pair there and we count the multiple bond as one pair, two pairs around that carbon atom, and two pairs that we would count around that carbon atom, that's sp hybridization. That means that the four valence electrons, two of them are playing the game. They're, they're blending together and they're forming um, this sp, these two sp hybrids. But then the other two electrons are in non-hybridized p orbitals. So, do you remember what an sp hybrid looks like? If you remember, it is a 180 degree linear hybrid. So we have something like that there. Okay. So what's going to happen is we have a carbon atom here, and that's an sp orbital. And a carbon atom over here, that's an sp orbital with one electron each. I'm going to draw another carbon on this side. There's a sp there and an sp there, right? Both of them are showing sp hybridization. Now we're going to end up with two of these that are non hybridized in each carbon. So I'm going to draw one up here like this and one up here like that. So that's a non hybridized p. And now I need to get one other color. So I'm going to go with. This one here, and this other one is going to come in and out of the page, and that's really hard for me to draw. That's coming in and out of the page, and that's my second non-hybridized p orbital. Now each of these folks have one electron. There's one electron in that p orbital, and one electron in that one, one here, and one there. Now, can you imagine what's going to happen? If these two carbon atoms come close enough to each other, can't these two sp hybrids overlap and form a sigma bond? And then if they, if they continue to get close enough together, can't these p orbitals here that are non-hybridized, and we're going to call it, we're going to say they're on the y-axis, can't they overlap in a sideways fashion this way? We call that a pi bond. And then these coming in and out of the paper, we'll call that the z-axis, can also overlap. So we have a second pi bond. So a triple bond is the result of a sigma and two pi bonds. I'm going to try to build that for you with my two carbons. So we'll show this first. Here are my two carbon atoms with their sp's. Boom, they hit each other, head to head overlap. There is my sigma bond. Now, we have some p's here. So we're going to draw this, not, or we're going to build this one. That's a non hybridized p coming up. Coming up and down, we'll call that the y-axis there. We'll do another one on this one. Coming up and down on the y-axis. So when these guys bump into each other, we get a sigma here. And if these guys can get close enough to each other, they will sideways overlap. We'll have one pi bond. And then, in addition to that, we have another non-hybridized P coming in and out of the paper on each of these atoms. Okay, and we'll get another overlap. So let's see all of them. Boom, there's my head-to-head. -head. That's sp, head-to-head, -head. that's a sigma bond. 
And then if these two on my y-axis can overlap in a parallel fashion, we call that a pi bond, and then these two that are going in and out of my paper, okay, we're going to say that that's the z-axis, if they come close enough to each other, they can also overlap, and so we have a second pi bond. So whenever you see a triple bond, it's made up of a sigma and two pi's. Pi's are due to the parallel overlap of non-hybridized orbitals. Sigma bonds, you'll see, are oftentimes due to the head-to-head -head overlap of hybrid orbitals. Okay? All right, that's where I wanted to stop today. You can look at some pretty pictures in your book and try to read the explanation, but I'm telling you the authors have a difficult time putting this into words. You'll see what I mean as you try to read through it. So good luck with this. Have a great day. Bye-bye.